This is the GPL Podcast, sponsored by Vintage Minnesota Hockey, your exclusive source for throwback Minnesota jerseys. Visit VintageMNHockey.com. Now, here's Hammy, Vigo, and your host, Jupiter. Good evening and welcome to the GPL podcast, episode number 124. We are back from our long winter break that we usually take uh, for most of December, since the team usually doesn't play too much and we're all busy. But uh, we have a guest on tonight again. Um, He was guest on our number two show and has been on almost every year, I think, Frank. Uh, Frank Mazzanco, thanks for joining us yet again. Yeah, you're welcome. And gosh, your ratings have been just skyrocketing ever <laughs> since number two, right? Oh, number two. Oh, if you can actually go back and listen to those podcasts, and they're pretty ugly. Oh, <laughs> no. I've gone back and listened to my old tapes. That's <laughs> ugly enough. Hey, you know, we never claim to be professional. We just, we're just we just a bunch of guys just out there putting a little product out there, and we've gotten a little better. And the production- i got an ugly tape coming up. I'm, I'm working on a... Um, I think it's a 25th year. Let's see nine. I got. I have tape from a '93 playoff game. Me and Wooger. Really? Yeah. I just Wooger, it Wooger would have been coaching. Wooger would have been coaching that. Are you sure it's not 2003? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Wooger yeah, would have been coaching. Be right. Me. So then, what's this? 15 years. I lost a decade somewhere in my life. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that would be what, 15? Yeah, so it would be like 15th anniversary of this game was a 93. I think it was a Duluth and um, Gopher game. It must have been mid-season. Also, you know what? Now now they think about it, that 93 game I got is me and Tom Reed. Okay, okay. Um, a, a game against Wisconsin at, um, uh, at the Dane? Uh, Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee. And the young Ryan Lefevre was on the show. Oh, but here that's... I dominate. You haven't even introduced your regular. Oh, well, you're, that is quite all right. So everyone knows that we're always joined by Hammy and Vigo. Hammy, how are you doing? Did you have a nice break? Yeah, I can't complain. Uh, a little bit too much time off from work, man. I was feeling sluggish. <laughs> well, Vigs, you know, we know you're always busy because you have young kids and you just had a nice Christmas. And it must have been fun with the kids with Christmas, mm-hmm. wasn't it? It's fun, although one of the fun things that comes up with five-year-olds is, you know, you ask them, do you think they're going to be on the nice list or the naughty list? <laughs> and they go, doesn't matter. We got grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> so they get pretty excited for the season. And uh, my five-year-old's playing mini mite hockey now. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting ice time and uh, the rinks across the street are open now. And it's, uh, it's a fun, busy time. Hammy, are you already following Vigo's kids for recruiting purposes? I uh, no, I can't say that I am. I, I usually let them age a little bit. Maybe <laughs> Lucia is, though, and these days you never know. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's why they have the little chippers at uh, Mariucci between periods. <laughs> Well, boys, uh, before we signed off for the, uh, 2017, uh, we talked about uh, a series with Ohio State. And uh, I think we were talking probably split or something along those lines. And, uh, Frank, you went out to Columbus, and uh, it didn't turn out so well for our Gophers. Do you remember those, that series? <laughs> do, did you say, do I remember it? Do you remember it? It, was, it seemed like so long ago, but it was not good for the Gophers. Uh, yeah, when you put Ohio State in your tweet this afternoon, I thought, no, it's got to be a typo. He, he's got to re- be really <laughs> meaning St. Cloud State. Um, no. no. That was a long time ago. That was pretty. That was one of the more depressing trips uh, that I've been on in, in quite a while because you're right. You know, they expected at least a split and, uh, you know, banged around like they're very good at doing these days, banging around the rink and getting chances and not being able to score and, uh, watch Leon Brewstead have three whacks at the puck and not a one of them was close to going in. I mean, it was just a miserable, that was a very quiet ride home. Oh, I very bet it was. I bet it was. Uh, um, I know Hammy, you and I are probably a little more upset than Viggs cause Viggs knows that, uh, he, Viggs, we, we, you're the level headed one, I would say. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, I know I was not very happy after that uh, Ohio State series. Uh, Hammy, I'm guessing you weren't either. But Viggs, please bring us back to reality. Well, on the bright side, they, they <laughs> did outshoot the Buckeyes both games. Oh, Jesus. You know, this was, isn't Penn State. Two games where they, they are generating offense. They're just not producing goals. And as mad as you want to get at players about not converting chances, like Bristet kind of whiffing on pucks, you know, as long as they're generating the chances, you have to hope in the long run that they they do it in the games that matter. And let's let's be honest, Notre Dame's running away with the Big Ten. Gophers are in good shape pairwise. That series in the big picture doesn't matter. You know, if if they have this trend where they don't play well or continue not to score as we get to the end of the season, then you can get concerned. But there's really not too many things Lucia can do other than continue to pump the tires of his players that have scored before. Is there any question why his kids don't need Santa Claus? <laughs> Way to go, Veeks. That's that's good. That's good. Keep a stiff upper lip on all that stuff. Now, on the other side, Hammy, how did you feel about Ohio State, the, the two losses? Well, I mean, obviously, we all kind of expected a little bit better result. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I, when you get an overtime loss, I mean, I guess you can see, you know, how it's the, the thin line between winning and losing. So, I mean, I, I think that that's one of the things you can look at. Um, but, yeah, it definitely wasn't something that was uh, a very thrilling result for any of us. And it was kind of like, all right, I think we're all ready for the break. So Yeah, that's true. Well, one thing that did happen uh... – Frank was that uh, Mr. Robson became eligible that Ohio State weekend, and after the two to one loss, uh, Shearhorn uh, sat out his first game in pff, forever ninety some odd games. Um, uh, how do you think Robson did in his first game? I mean, it wasn't a win; the offense didn't do good. But how do you think Robson looked in, in his first game as a Gopher? I, I thought he looked really good. Um, I, I thought he he looked poised. I thought he was square to his shots. I don't think he was flopping around very much. Um, I don't quite feel the same way after game two against army, but I, um, you know, I'm going to reserve judgment because it's a work in progress. I mean, he's, he's got some adjustments to make there. I'm, um, and I'm not saying he played poorly against army. I, he got a win, which is important. He only gave up the one goal. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I just thought he was jumping around in the crease a little bit more in that Army game than he was at Ohio State. But, yeah, after that Ohio State game, I thought, well, Bing, this is no, no wonder everybody's talking so highly of him. This is this is a slam dunk now. We're going to rotate goaltenders the rest of the year. Well, Frank, he, he did was like the number three star of the week in the Big Ten for getting that one win. I'm not sure why either, but he was. So he must not have been too bad. No, he wasn't. He wasn't, but I, I – <laughs> I mean, it's going to sound like I'm taken away from the kid, but I, I don't put a lot of my, mileage in those three stars of the week, you know, necessarily. There's so much goes into it. I just remember there was one PR director, league PR director, uh, who said, well, you know, we gave it to the other guy last week, so th it was this guy's turn this week. Well, I mean, that sounds like a Frank Mazzocco three stars pick. I mean, you, you can't do that when you're the league <laughs> PR director. I mean, you got to be a little more objective about it but uh you know that plus the other thing is who else was playing i mean the, the league the, you know the schedule was getting thinner i don't know if all the teams were playing but so i mean I, that sounds like i'm i'm slamming robson and i'm and i'm not i i don't intend to do that i, I you know i want to give him the you know i've just I've, I've not heard any bad words about him and i want to give him the whole chance to get going and, and he very well may well, as a result of that OSU loss or pair of losses, Hammy, uh, Gophers find themselves in fourth place in the Big Ten with two games in hand on all those other teams, or those teams have all two games in hand, I should say. Um, at least uh, it looks like Notre Dame's going to run away with it, Hammy, but uh, does Minnesota have a – they do have a chance to get back up there, but it's not looking good for the Big Ten this year. No, and I mean, I guess you kind of just have to look at it like Vig said. I mean, at this point, you just try to continue to uh, improve your performance week to week and keep yourself in that pairwise hunt and um, then hope when you're kind of hitting the end of the season that you're playing your best hockey because um, when you kind of – it's kind of one of those – the old saying goes, you can't win the league in the first half, but you can certainly lose it. And uh, I think that that's kind of the way that they've played up to this point um, – 
you know, Notre Dame certainly has put themselves in a good position to win, but they haven't won it. But the Gophers have definitely put themselves in a position where it's going to be pretty tough to, you know, even compete for it. So at this point, it's just about playing, you know, improving and playing your best hockey at the end of the year. Viggs, they are four, seven, one, and one in the Big Ten. Uh, that's not going to cut it, but like you said, uh, we have to look at the big picture. But for the Big Ten, it's not looking good. No, it's not looking good, and you can see that Don Lucia is trying to shake things up and make some moves. I mean, when's the last time you saw a player added that's the quality of Clayton Phillips? You know, you're bringing a guy who's a, a drafted player who's being counted on to contribute on the power play and generate some offense. And what I saw with him against Army is he's a player who could who can help. You know, he's got quick feet. He's got quick puck skills. He looks very comfortable at the top of the power play, even after just one week in Vernon Gold. And he's a player who's going to contribute. And then you also saw Tyler Nanny being pushed up to forward. You know, he's a player who himself today said that he prefers playing defense, and he, that's where he sees his, his future. But Lucia has talked him into playing forward because they need guys who can skate, provide some speed, and provide some secondary secondary scoring because that's really hurt them this year. Well, actually, that was the next topic we're going to talk about. It was uh, you know, Clayton Phillips coming in, and uh, on his way out was uh, Nate Kanapke. Is that, how you, is that how you pronounce his name? Kanapke? Uh, Kanapke? Kanapke. Kanapke, yep. I, I leaned away from this thing here. Uh, Kanapke. <laughs> So so Phillips in, Kanepke out. Um, looks like Kanepke is going to, you know, they said he's going to spend the year in the USHL. I doubt he's coming back. I mean, do you think he's going to come back, Cammy, or is, is that the last we've seen of Nate? Uh, I mean, I think it's been typical that unless it's an academic situation, kids don't tend to come back from the school they live, or they, move, they leave uh, halfway through the year. So I would be a little surprised if that happened. And Viggs, uh, I believe you looked. Uh, when was last time? Has the Gophers ever done this midseason? Brought somebody in that wasn't like somebody like a Robson who had to sit out on purpose. The only close parallel at all is Andy Brink joining the program. You know, he was just skating with the team. He was on the golf team, and Woob decided, you know, you can help us. We're going to add you to the roster officially. You know, he became a hockey player instead of a golfer. Uh, that's the <laughs> only thing even close I could find. And that was like 20, 25 years ago. Yeah, that would have been a long time ago. So, oh boy. Well, well, we, how about uh, di- didn't he bring uh, didn't he bring Tommy Nevers in uh, once also? Yes, the ball player. <laughs> I I remember that. I don't. I don't remember when he brought him in. Did he bring but, him but, in halfway but, through but, the year? It, I can't it, even remember. It's it, been but, so long. I believe it, Nevers yeah, was. Yeah, it was yeah. like an injury deal where I mean they got where they were getting so banged up that he needed some kind of help somewhere. And I, I, and I'm not even sure never saw a game. Although he, he must have, otherwise it wouldn't be noteworthy. But I think he did see at least but, one. But game. the thing is, is who was he brought in? I don't. I can't remember a kid coming out of juniors or or outside of the campus to come in and play. And if I've missed somebody, I don't think I've missed a third round draft pick coming in to the middle <laughs> of the campaign. So I, I don't know that that's ever happened. I, I, uh, I just think it's a heck of an adjustment and a gutsy move by Phillips to come in, um, in the middle of the year, by the way, we, I, I we're doing one of our gopher insiders with him. He's quite an articulate kid. Um, oh, maybe I let a cat out of the bag here. Might get in trouble for, <laughs> yeah, yes, V, we did get a chance to do a one-on-one with him today, and uh, so we're going to have the interview. I'm going to push for getting it on the air on uh, Saturday night. I'll be listening then. He has not faced the rest of the media jackals yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I promised I wouldn't be a jackal. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, well, that's the thing. This, this is a kid who they wanted to have come in right away at the start of the season. He had some academic things to finish up with high school before he could come to the university. He did that. They reached out to him and, you know, he can help this team and it's kind of a, a no lose situation for them because, you know, he's probably a guy who wouldn't have been here for four years anyway. So they get him for maybe three and a half now. But what does it say that, uh, about, you know, how Don feels, how this season's going, that he needs to do this. Well, I think he's definitely under some pressure to perform this year in the postseason. Um, I, t- I talked to Don and Mark Coyle this past month, and both those guys say 
you know, for an extension to happen or for him to be having a say in the program, you know, they need to win this year. You know, they need to show that they can perform in the NCAA tournament. Well, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's like I said, it's kind of unprecedented for us to see that. And, uh, uh, just, and obviously, I, th- I think it's a great move, but uh, who knows how Nate Konepke feels. I'm, I'm guessing, he, I don't know if he wanted to leave, but maybe he was kind of forced out. I'd be kind of curious to see how that all really washed well, out for, what happened. For him to play any games this year, and, and that's what he needs, is, you know, juniors was the only way that was going to happen. Because what this defense needs is offensive players, and that's not Nate's game. He's a penalty kill guy, defend the lead. So he wasn't going to provide offense. So that's what happened in between. And then uh, we had a, a series with Army West Point. And uh, it had been in a long time since uh, Army had been in town, Frank. But uh, it, it was a bit chippy this weekend, don't you think? Um, no. I, thought, I thought at times it was a little chippy. Yeah, well, maybe it's just me. Uh, no, actually, I, I, I didn't. But, you know, you see chipping. I, I don't see chipping this right away. I think you see chipping this more w- when you're watching on TV because you get the close-ups. You know, we're, we're at one distance and we don't get to see the. But I, I just thought it was a tough, hard-fought series. I mean, I, I, give, I give Army credit for being as, as it, You know, they, they had skating skills. They had physical skills. Um, they just couldn't handle the puck. They couldn't do anything with it. And I mean that's it's, it's a bad quality to lose, but I think their skating and their physical play kept them in those games and and made it a pretty good challenge for the Gophers. I mean, I, I felt a little screwy after the week was over, saying, "Geez, did I oversell this thing on the air? Where was was Army not that good?" Or <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, you just kind of have second. I, I did. I had second thoughts about that, but you know, at the time and the way I called it and the way Wally called it was that. Um, you know, Army was a good, strong, good skating team, strong team, and they they gave the Gophers a battle. They definitely did, and you know, I I was. It's been a while since we've seen some blowouts, and I was hoping you know one of these days, you know, the Gophers will light up a team that's inferior to them. We didn't see that, Amy. No, uh, you know, I mean, I guess it's just one of those things where I think when you've been off for several weeks, and it's kind of like that. Uh, right before that, that one game or that one series right before the start of the year, you just kind of expect that it's going to be a little bit, you know, lackluster. We would see that with uh, the classic in prior years, you know, where maybe we were expecting to see better performance um, and just didn't quite pan out that way. So, but I mean, you get two wins. I don't think they played poorly by any stretch, um, but uh, it certainly is kind of tough to gauge when you don't play the greatest competition and it's, also at a point in the year where guys have had time off. So, you know, again, this, this past weekend, um, Viggs, uh, we saw Robson play one of the games. We actually have a question by, uh, on, on uh, Twitter um, by John Candles. He wonders, wondering if you think Lucia will use two goalies for weekends more now. I mean, he did kind of rotate them the last two weekends. Are we going to see more of that, or did Don kind of give you any heads up on what he's planning to do with the goalies uh, for the future? Um, after last weekend, he said he foresaw playing both goalies over the next couple weekends until someone either establishes themselves as a dominant player or the hot goalie. Um, he's going to play both. Hmm. Interesting. Well, so I, I'm guessing we'll probably see Shearhorn at St. Cloud this week and maybe uh, Robson when they come back home for the home, home and home. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Another question is uh, one Pat Micheletti wants to know, Frank, which, which number 26 is your favorite gopher? Hey, I got to look in the book. Well, how many 26s were there? <laughs> my book. <laughs> Blake, Blake Wheeler, didn't, wasn't Wheeler 26? Uh, maybe uh, Thomas Vanek? Uh, I'm looking, babe. Hey, <laughs> Phil Kessel? <laughs> were they? I, I hey. Number illiterate here, but uh, there there is a book that's got. Uh, was Wheeler twenty six? Wheeler you, had you, Wheeler had a couple numbers actually. How about Nick Angel? Ah, bingo! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was from a, a Mixler listener saying they they wanted Mick, Nick Angel as your favorite number twenty six. I, yeah, I'd pick him over Micheletti. <laughs> Nicky had, Nick oh. had some speed. He was fun. He had a good sense of humor. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm guess I'm uh, guessing he will be joining you guys Sunday after or Sunday evening, won't he? I, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I, I just look at this is the, the pick is easy. It's Darian Romanko. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I'm you know a, what? Mick would go along. Mick is a big Romanko fan, by the way. I just happened to talk to him today. A fan of he a guy is that a never big scores. Darian Romanko fan. He uh, he thinks he's he thinks he's got some scoring ability, and uh, somebody's just got to tap into it. Christian Isaacson is in that list. Jay Bearball. Yep. Castle was yes. Vanek. Oh, we had some good ones, didn't we? Oh yeah. Scott Bloom. Scott Bloom. Oh, wow. So th- so there you go. Reed Pat. Larson. Reed Larson. How about that one? Yeah. Is that before your guys' time? Uh, it, no, was bef- it, was no. bef- it was before my time, but uh, we definitely know that uh, uh, Reed wasn't good in the booth. Sorry, Frank. He had other <laughs> qualities. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason why the Wooger came along. and the, I'm sorry, but the Wooger was wonderful. Have, have you talked to the Wooger lately? How's the Wooger doing? I don't know. I feel bad. I, I <laughs> I get asked enough. You think it would shame me into just getting out there and inviting them out to lunch or something? I, I got to do that. It's, it's, it's. You know, I got two weeks here with no travel. I, I should do it in the next two weeks. We've heard that before, Frank. We'll hold you to it. All right. <laughs> shame me on the internet. Yes, shame that, me on the, that's what we do, and it's what we do well. Well, before we're going to talk about the World Juniors a little bit and talk about Saint Cloud, but before we do that, we need to hear from our sponsor. VintageMNHockey.com is a proud sponsor of the GPL podcast. Well, what is Vintage MN Hockey? Well, it's kind of the place to get all of your history of Minnesota hockey, from the pros to the minors to the collegiate teams to even the high school teams. All information about any of those teams can be found on VintageMNHockey.com. They also have great interviews with some historical Minnesota hockey figures like John Mayasich and Lou Nanny, Glenn Sonmore, some of the greats of Minnesota hockey. So make sure you check out those interviews. It's a really great thing. But as like I always say, I think my favorite part is the store. The store, you can buy a custom historical jersey from the Gophers or the Bulldogs or some of your favorite high school teams. And if you do make a purchase, just use the code GPL podcast, all one word, and you'll get 10% off your order. So make sure you visit vintage and follow them on Twitter at vintage MN hockey. Well, before we get into some world junior talk and St. Cloud, um, some great thing happened on the internet today and, Someone posted on Twitter, and it was uh, our, our great friend, Frank Saratori. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, somebody asked him about some of the refereeing this past weekend, and, and uh, this audio's not, quality's not great, but uh, let's just take a listen to Frank. The great officials, you know, anybody can call penalties. Hey, if you're looking hard enough, if you're looking hard enough, you can find a penalty on just about every shift. The great officials know how to manage the game. They know how to manage people. And like I said, you know, um, I never said one word to the guy. Finally, after the fifth or sixth penalty, you got to stick up for your guys. And I clapped three times, and he's looking at me from the other side of the rink, and he didn't hesitate to tee me up. Rather than having the bedside manner to come over, okay, Frank, I got the message. That's enough. You know, but, uh, you know, maybe... Hopefully, Don Adam will learn with this, uh, work with this guy, and he'll learn this. Hey, some maybe some of them never learn. I mean, like you just never. Know. Hey, there's three things I've never seen in, in my in my life. I've I've never seen Bigfoot. I've never seen the Easter Bunny, and I've never seen a referee say he had a crap game. You know, so uh, I have seen Santa Claus. I actually met him in a bar in San Francisco. Me and my brother Tony. Good dude, Santa likes his pops. Good dude, Santa likes his pops. Sorry, the audio quality is a little weird there. It was like in stereo at first, and then it went to mono on one side. So not the greatest audio quality. But all that matters is uh, Mr. Mazzocco, Mr. Seratori is a treasure. I, I think he's one of the funniest human <laughs> beings I've ever met in my life. And I'm, I'm not saying just coach. I'm not saying hockey. I'm not saying uh, he is just hysterical. He's a, He's a, he's a wit. It runs in the family. Um, I'll, uh, you know, the, <laughs> he named the arena what it should have been named. He called it the Wooger Dome. <laughs> and I, I just, that from that day on, I, you just realize how funny that man is. Um, <laughs> what it, 
Yeah, he's had quite a few of them. I mean, when when blue line lunches used to be in vogue, he would get up and he would do his half hour and your sides would be splitting. You would have paid 10 or 12 dollars for a lunch and you would have gotten like a 50 dollar comedy club show right there. He just hysterical. Well, <laughs> It's we we actually the last few days we've seen a lot of brutal honesty on the internet. Uh, coaches saying you know, um, being way honest and more honest than we thought. I mean, I, I believe I heard some quotes from the Swiss coach at the World Juniors saying a lot of honesty and uh, Vigs. We don't see a lot of that honesty these days. Usually the coaches are pretty much straightforward and just kind of go around it. But uh, there are a couple gems out there. Yeah, there's always that Bill Belichick, you know, play everything tight to the vest and script everything and don't give anything away. And then there's other guys who feel pretty secure in their spot where they can, you know, get on their pedestal and speak their minds, which is good to see. You know, this year, I think we've seen Don even get a little bit more opinionated and honest with the media this year, which has been fun to see. Uh, but I think it's good for the games when uh, you have colorful personalities. And that's actually one thing we've kind of lacked for a little while are, are the personalities. Uh, um, everyone everyone knows the Wooger is a little more outrageous than, than the Don has been. But uh, when you throw in somebody like a Frank Saratori there, uh, it's, it's, it just brings us back to those old school hockey guys that are, that are just fun. And like you said, Frank, he's just a funny guy. Oh, he is. He's, he's hilarious. But, you know, there's a little bit, there's, the pressure is not, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think there's pressure to win at Air Force Academy. No, I'm not saying they don't. I mean, you know, there, there's all kinds of pressure that they have any, you know, to excel anyway at either of those two military academies. And, you know, the, the kids are, are just driven human beings to begin with and to perform their best. But, you know, I don't think anybody said, you know, but geez, our, our program is going downhill. We need you to come back and, and build us a winner. We got to get to the NCAA. I don't, think that's happened so when when you're not under that kind of microscope you can be a little looser and um and that's that's part of the deal you know there's a lot more college tv uh than than when i started remember you know back in the 80s it, if you didn't have a phone uh, if you couldn't make a phone call to a radio station in uh in the upper peninsula of michigan you'd have to wait till tomorrow's paper to get a score and then maybe you'd get all of them so in other words what i'm saying is you, there's just much more focus uh, they're, they're, they're more visible to the whole community and and with that comes a little bit more close to the vest and you're afraid to give away some things and that's it's what's well, a different game it's just a whole different world well it's definitely different you look back at the 90s it was it was, <laughs> it was mazako and reed and you guys were the only guys in college hockey for a while yeah I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, take, they had some nesting stuff. Yeah. Take it a generation before us and go back to, to when um, uh, Mariucci was coaching and he and an opposing coach would wind up in the bar and have some drinks. I mean, you, know, you think that's going to happen today? Not no. very often. <laughs> it definitely won't. So it's definitely a different time. But yeah, one thing that's different now than it was for maybe, say, 15, 20 years ago is the World Juniors Vigs. Um, it's a special tournament now, and it's a tournament that uh, – I guess back in the '90s and early early 2000s, that uh, the U.S. would come back with their tail between their legs, but uh, it's a little different these days. And uh, right now, our, our team USA is in the semifinal. They'll face Sweden uh, tomorrow, um, and, and uh, a certain Gopher is doing pretty well, isn't he? Yeah, Casey Middlestad is uh, leading the team in scoring, and put him back with his peers, and he is just even more special. And he's got more space. He's got the the size advantage on so many players. You know, he just looks really comfortable on that rink and in the big situations. And uh, it should be fun to see him against Sweden. Sweden has a tremendous record in the World Juniors lately. Um, I think you could probably say it's you know Sweden, U.S., maybe Canada three these days. I saw a feature on TSN uh, before the tournament where they said you know what, the U.S. might be ahead of Canada right now developing players for this tournament. Uh, it's pretty impressive, the performance uh, Bob Moscow's gotten out of these guys the last two years, and they're playing some really good hockey, and should be a fun one tomorrow. Hammy, will Middlestead come back and look like this for the Gophers? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, you always see, we've seen historically over the years, some guys come back and they kind of get that boost from that um, being involved in that. And there's other guys that uh, seem to kind of lose some of their energy from having been 
involved in that tournament. Um, so hopefully he will um, be one of those guys that does get a boost from it. Uh, I think the thing that you get a little worried about, not that we didn't have to think about him leaving early anyways, but when you see a guy go to um, a level where he's playing with, you know, very talented guys and he shows a lot of success, it kind of probably perks up the ears of uh a general manager and says, you know, if we get him in here and get him, you know, some other talented guys around him, he could probably make an impact sooner than we might expect. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it, you kind of get a little bit leery, uh, when you see that, but you know, I'm glad for him. I'm glad for team USA that he's having that kind of success. Frank, have you enjoyed the world juniors a little bit? I've enjoyed it immensely. I mean, it's, I, I don't, uh, for various reasons, I don't get an off, usually get a lot of time to watch, uh, you know, sometimes I'll have to go to a replay, but I've been able to watch a, a goodly amount of these things live and, um, it's a treat. I mean, it's a great product. I, I don't quite understand why there aren't more people in the stands there in Buffalo. I, um, um, you know, especially because it's just a short border crossing for the Canadians who supposedly love this, uh, tournament more than just about anything in the world. I, I thought there'd be a few more bodies uh, in the seats. Maybe there will be for these of uh, the final two rounds of games uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just enjoyed the heck of it, but I, I wonder if I, did you, either of you guys watch any of the uh, uh, NBC game tonight before we started the podcast here? And I, I sent out a tweet trying to get an answer and I, no one's even responded to it. Um, there was a guy on the desk there uh, in the studio, Dennis, an analyst, and I don't know exactly who it was. I Bring didn't a bell. See it. I didn't see it, so I'm not okay, really sure. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, but I don't get. So he started talking about the need to, you know, the, the U.S. Olympic team has only picked one goaltender at this point. Uh, he went on to suggest that maybe that the U.S. Olympic team might be also in need of some help on defense, and he said they they could use Middlestad, who's a defenseman. Okay, so now I know that's <laughs> wrong, but <laughs> did he mean Lindgren? Ooh. I, I'm not sure where he was going with that comment, and I just thought I would throw that out here for you. And I, I don't know, you know, or has his is his credibility totally blown, and we don't know what the heck he was getting at. But and now, you know, he happened. Yeah, I I don't know now. If it's just me, I I hear uh, so much praise of Lindgren on the national team, and, and I just don't see it when he comes back here, Viggs. Well, you see it because you're expecting him to be a Mike Riley or a Nate yeah. Schmidt. And that's just not the kind of player he is. Bingo. And especially when you put him on the big ice, you know, it's not going to be as noticeable as when they're going to play, you know, on these NHL rinks and they need to play tight defense and shut down opposing players. That's where he shines. And, you know, it's just the kind of player you're looking for because he looks really steady, you know, clear in the front of the net, killing penalties, uh, getting the breakout started. But he's not going to be a flashy player who's going to show a lot of offense. Now, one topic that Frank mentioned there that I wanted to talk to you about, Viggs, is the attendance at the World Juniors is down quite a bit. And I know you were kind of you were talking about that earlier this week, saying how they're kind of pushing this as an NHL type of thing, and the cost of the tickets and everything is more along the NHL uh, level. Um, should they be doing this? Well, when you get in these tournaments where you're renting buildings like the Harbor Center in Buffalo, and last year they had the same problem when they were at the Air Canada Center and um, the Forum in Toronto, Montreal, you know, they're charging NHL prices. They're in NHL buildings, and people would rather go see the NHL. You know, when you're charging that much, you know, unless it's the gold medal game or a semifinal game, people aren't going to pay 80, 90 bucks for a lower level seat for these games. And I think they've kind of overestimated their market a little bit on this stuff. Um, when you get into a smaller building, something like, you know, if you had a Mariucci Ritter Arena building where you could have $40 tickets or $20 tickets, you know, you'd probably see a bigger turnout for this kind of stuff. And, you know, it's these tournaments and the regionals, you know, they, they have these guarantees to line the pockets of people you know, in the IIHF or USA Hockey or, you know, Hockey NCAA. Canada, and it just doesn't work out well for the fans. Yeah, it's, you know, if, if they're charging those kind of prices, that's, that is a shame because uh, it seems like the whole tournament, um, there have been nobody at these games, you know, obviously except for the outdoor game, which was uh, which is a farce in the first place. But uh, 
Um, when I heard that the, you know, I didn't get to see the game yesterday, but when I heard that there was places fairly empty, uh, that was pretty disappointing. Man, that's USA versus Russia. It's the commies. Come on, I mean, they've been the mortal enemy in hockey for decades. Uh, that place should have at least been half full, but it was it was empty. It was also the first day back to work after a long holiday break yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, maybe. I mean, but you're right. There were fewer people there uh, for those games than there were for the the uh, round robin back be- between Christmas and New Year's. And what's funny is they've shown shots of the other arena that's attached, and it probably seats like 3,400, and that building's been kind of packed for games. You know, when Sweden played in there, you know, it, it was full. There was good atmosphere. Uh, they, they haven't shown a lot of those games on NHL Network, but it's a it's a fun environment when you get enough people filling a building. When did I'd much Grand rather Forks... have. Sorry, V. Go. Um, I'd rather have a Ritter packed than an empty Excel. You yeah. know, for these kinds of things. Um, I think it was in Grand Forks, two thousand five. Nate Wells would be the the person who knows this probably off the top of his head. Okay. But um, and why aren't you following it, it, Nate Wells on Twitter, Ham, uh, <laughs> Frank? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I thought that was I, pretty I, funny. <laughs> I, I, yeah, well, I, he, I, I, I didn't even know you could find out who was following you unless you spend a lot of time. I guess maybe it meant well, actually. Something. So if, Nate, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll um, actually I'll if you, if you up, I'll follow if you click on well, somebody's I'll name. If, no, <laughs> if you click on somebody's name, it'll say, it'll say if they follow you or not. So. He probably clicked in your name, saw you didn't follow him. He was like, geez, what, what a jerk he's probably okay. thinking. <laughs> uh, he's probably trying to slide into your DMs. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, yeah it. he might start annoying you then. Sorry, Nate, we're just kidding. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the World Juniors is, is going to be wrapping up here. Hopefully the Team USA, boy, you know, if they win it this year, uh, Hammy, I, I think they'll deserve it because, you know, uh, for a medal round to go through Russia, Sweden, and most likely Canada. If you get a gold medal out of that, boy, do you deserve it because it's not an easy road. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't think that it's an ever really an easy road, you know, if you win the gold medal on that. I mean, you're going to have to go through some good teams. It's kind of like winning the NCAA tournament. You know, you know that in order to get to that title game and to win it all, you're going to have to play. I mean, you might have an easier first-round game, but you know that you're going to have some pretty tough, uh, competition and you know especially in that semifinal final time frame so yeah i think he earned it regardless of uh you know the year i think so what it's just, always something i think tough. what just ramped it up was the fact that they were playing russia in a quarterfinals and typically it's more of a semifinal that they would play that kind of caliber team but uh, uh it's all entertaining to me and i just know that uh, tomorrow vigs uh, against sweden it should be a fun game yeah, it should be a fun game because Sweden's a puck possession team and they've got probably the number one pick in next year's draft and, and Dahlin, uh, the defenseman, the young guy. Um, one thing I'll be looking for is to see if Quinn Hughes picks up his game a little bit. You know, he's a player who looked real dynamic in college hockey, but lately in the World Junior, he's looked a little um, passive and hasn't found a way to make his mark. Um, Fox has been the guy who's been the most impressive, I think, for the U.S. defense. Go USA. That's all I can say. It's a, it's a fun time of the year. It's a, the World Juniors and uh, Regional Weekend for me, you know, with all that hockey, is, is, is the best times of the year for hockey for me. So, Well, this weekend, guys, uh, we've got the number one St. Cloud State Huskies at home and home. And, Frank, if they don't beat one of these Minnesota teams, uh, hell's going to break loose. They've got to win at least one this weekend, Frank, or – it's. I mean, even though it's the number one team, they just can't beat any of these Minnesota teams. No, it's it's a cloud that's kind of hanging. It's one of those clouds that doesn't really have any meaning in the standings, but there, it's a well, it's a it's an image issue. Uh, if nothing else, I mean, you you can do well in the national tournament. You can, which they haven't done great, but I mean, you know, you you can have success other places. Uh, but for the record that they have against the Minnesota teams, it's that's getting to be a, a a bit of a blemish, and they're not doing real hot against St. Cloud State. I think they've only won two of the last seven overall, something like that. Two of the last seven in that building, um, and this is not going to be any easier. Holy smokes, it's not going to be any easier. What a juggernaut these guys! I I was just 
I, I was amazed that uh, as I looked at it deeper, they've only got two losses this year, St. Cloud State. That's pretty stingy. Yeah. At Denver. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a tough road trip as it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, and they're scoring goals. They're getting over four and a half goals a game, I think. So, you know, I mean, going in, the Gophers are spotting them a, a goal and a third going in. Uh, it just and says, who would have thought that? Well, <laughs> the, the, that point is very valid, and I think it all comes back to, you know, how well teams like uh, St. Cloud and, and Duluth have done against Minnesota the past five years. They, they've, they've done very well. They've done, you know, well in the tournament. I mean, uh, Duluth was in the national championship game last year. Uh, St. Cloud is, you know, still hasn't won the big one yet, but uh, – <laughs> This could be their year, and you know, Hammy, um, you know, win or not, you know, breaking this streak or not, uh, at least getting one win this weekend would be uh, very good for the psyche of the Gopher hockey team right now. Well, I mean, I, I kind of piggyback with what Frank was saying. I mean, it, it, from a game to game perspective, it doesn't really mean any more than any other game, um, whether it's Minnesota competition or not. Uh, I know from an ego perspective, especially from fans, it has a little bit more meaning, but, um, yeah, I look at it more as the, Hey, we're playing a good team this coming weekend. You want to, like I said, start the second half of the season on a positive note. You want to feel like you're getting better as the season is progressing. The Gophers have played the toughest schedule in the country up to this point. So I think that they're pretty well prepared um, for this kind of competition. So I, I, you know, I'm hoping that uh, they'll bring their A game and they'll play well. I, I certainly don't foresee us sweeping the series by any stretch, but I would like to see, um, you know, two competitive games and certainly Gophers winning one of those games. So we'll just have to see how it plays out. Viggs, what makes St. Cloud so good this year? Well, I think Jimmy Schultz really makes them a, a dangerous team in their power play. Um, they have lots of guys who can score on that power play unit. They've been very effective. Uh, makes it tough to play against them because you don't want to be taking penalties. And then also, you know, their penalty kill has been good because they've gotten good goaltending. So you put those two things together, and it's a tough team to beat. Um, their defense is probably a little bit better than the Gophers. Uh, they've got guys who can move the puck and get involved in, in the rush. And I think one of the big things in the series, looking back, I think, St. Cloud's won um, five of the last six. In those games, Minnesota's turned over the puck a lot, and St. Cloud's been able to counter. And the defense has been getting a rush, and they, they get these odd man situations. They've been able to capitalize, and the Gophers have taken too many penalties. So those are two things I'm really going to be watching this weekend. Well, they cannot take penalties this weekend because St. Cloud's power play is very good, Frank. Uh, if Minnesota starts taking penalties, uh, it could be a long weekend. You know, one of the things you, uh, that I've noticed with their stats is that, first of all, their overall scoring is spread out over quite a few players. Goal scoring now. I'm not going to get into the assists. But oftentimes you see what happens when it gets to the, you look at the power play numbers, and that gets to be concentrated among two or three players maybe. Their power play numbers are spread out over a whole bunch of guys. Power plays, four, three four, another three, a couple of more with two. I mean, that that's at least six right there. Um, so it goes with what Vig was saying. I mean, this, this power play is the power play has depth, not just their, not, not just their regular roster. Um, and at 26% on the power play, that's pretty good. Now Vig, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, on via the Mixler chat, uh, Tony Newell, he's saying that, uh, St. Cloud's a very good team. He's been to a few games this year, but he's thinking that uh, their competition they've played is maybe not as tough as Minnesota, so maybe their record's a little inflated. What do you think of that? Oh, wow, no. Don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's just... they probably haven't played the depth of teams that Minnesota's played so far. I mean, Minnesota's played a very difficult schedule. Only three teams they've played this season have been unranked. So Minnesota's had a tough test. But St. Cloud is playing good teams. It's not like they're playing uh, AIC and teams like that. You know, they're they're playing a decent schedule. Uh, do you guys? Does anybody believe in strength of schedule? That number. How oh. does number two sound? 
<laughs> for St. Cloud State. Well, there you go. And the Gophers number four. I mean, you you can't say one. Th- those are so close. I don't know that you. It'd be fair to say that one is that much better than the other. But I would say they're pretty darn comparable. Where are you seeing that, Frank? Because I'm looking at the the uh, uh, college hockey news like uh, ratings, and I just the strength um, of schedule I, is what I'm looking at there. So I was just um, curious. Yeah, well, I went to uh, Ostro. Is that uh, U.S. College oh, Hockey US, Online? Right. Well, you go to their RPI, and then I know they've just revamped the website, uh, so it's meant more for phone. So on the phone, you can you can scroll over. See, I am tech savvy here, <laughs> Jupe. I am. Uh, you can scroll over in that right hand column, and you get a strength of schedule ranking. Then I didn't well, know College Hockey News. That's, Did you say College Frank, Hockey News or Frank? That's the RPI. That's a little bit different than strength of schedule, which you'd see in the Cratch right. rankings. A, Cratch Cratch breaks out strength of schedule separately, whereas RPI yeah. takes into account your winning percentage based on who you play. Because I, you know, it's not like they have played okay, so a, who, a bad so schedule. They're, they're seven in the strength of schedule rank. They are number Cratch? one in RPI. Yep, and Minnesota is number one in strength of schedule and Cratch. And so, so we we believe those numbers more than the others because. Hey, it's I'm, all I'm numbers. Not, it's all arguing. statistics. You can yeah. twist them, right? So I, don't I was know. told there'd be no math. Answer. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I, I've I've heard from mathematicians, um, a couple of the guys that that first helped build a, the Yes Show site, who would tell me that the the Cratch numbers are are a little, you know, math are a little more mathematically pure, but they don't sell well to the coaches, et cetera, and therefore they've never really come into play in picking the uh, the field. But I I always thought that the strength of schedules of both of those were were the same, but I guess not. I'm, I've learned that tonight. I guess. I, I just think wow. you look at St. Cloud's schedule, and they they played at Princeton for non-conference. They played BC at home, who isn't having a great season, and they played Alaska and Minnesota State. So I think you know when you're looking at that and you're comparing it to the Gophers, who they played with with Duluth and um, Harvard and Clarkson, and now St. Cloud State. You know, in their ten games, their only quote softies have been Army. Well, well the, the interesting part is is that. Uh... Obviously, Clarkson has gone on a tear since they you know, lost two games to Minnesota, and uh, it's those two wins by Minnesota over Clarkson that's keeping them much higher in the pairwise right now. I believe you know somebody was doing the math. If you take away those Clarkson wins, Minnesota's more closer to twenty than number ten in the pairwise. So keep winning, Clarkson. We needed to keep winning. All right, guys. What else? What else do we want to talk about for this weekend? How are the how is Minnesota going to win a game? What do they need to do, Viggs? Because you know they they obviously struggle against these Minnesota teams. You know, I, you know they had a lead on St. Cloud last year and choked it away and lost in overtime at Mariucci. What do they need to do to win? Well, they have to stop taking bad penalties. I feel like every weekend Don Lucia talks about them taking penalties in the offensive zone at the offense blue line, you know, those are just places where you can't commit penalties and put your team shorthanded. So I think we need to see that part of discipline come to fruition through a whole weekend. <clears throat> the one thing this team has done well is they've managed the puck well at the blue lines. The only game where they didn't was probably against Minnesota Duluth. But other than that, they've managed the puck probably better than any team I've seen from Don Lucci in the last 10 years. And then the third thing is figure out their power play. Oh, Hopefully boy. Clayton Phillips gets it going a little bit. But again, you know, we probably won't see what their power play will look like for the rest of the season until Casey Middlesex gets back. Uh, what are they, like over their last 20 on the power play or something like that? Yeah, they were 0 for 10 against Ohio State, and I think they were 0 for 10 against Army here. So it's it's something they have to figure out. I think they're 0 for 9 against Army. So it's it's not a good stretch, and they have to get that figured out. They it it was right brutal hitters. before that anyway. One time it. It, it was brutal for, before that anyway. I mean, it's been brutal all season. I mean, they've been ranked, you know, around 50 for most much of the year on the power play. Um, so that has got to change. Uh, Frank, what do you, what is the key? What does Minnesota need to do to at least win a game this weekend and not get embarrassed? I think they're going to have to out-goaltend 
uh, the Huskies. I, I think whatever game they win, I, I think their goaltender is going to be the star of the game. Um, what, what, what works in their favor this weekend is we'll have two games on a large sheet and two games against the team that does not like to take penalties. In fact, are they, you know, somewhere ranked 50 to 60 in the country in terms of, uh, fewest penalty minutes. So, um, you know, that bodes well for them that we might have get back to some run and gun hockey, which is where this team will flourish. Uh, and they can do it on a big sheet of ice, but I, but with the firepower that they're going to face with St. Cloud State, I, I think their goaltender is going to have to be the star of the game, and it's going to be a close win. It's not going to be a runaway. The, the, uh, the defensively, St. Cloud State is too good. How did they break through, Hammy? Hammy? Did we lose Hammy? Oh. He left us. He left us. Looks like we lost Hammy. Yeah. Why? What a shame! Didn't get hammy stuff. Yeah, I, to- I told you this Skype thing is just not friendly. I don't know. I you guys. Yeah, it's the easiest. Every year to use I come that. on here and I go, "Holy smokes! How am I going to pull this thing off?" He's having technical difficulties. He just texted us, so and somehow we managed to do it most most weeks. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> well, here's something for you, Frank. Um, our buddy Rob Shield, uh, Mr. <laughs> St- on the stats team, he sent out a tweet. He says, "Since you've been to most men's hockey rinks around the country." Where are the best and worst fans, students, atmosphere, radio facilities? So he kind of wants to know, you know, what's the best and worst of, of all of it? Um, I'm, I'm beginning to sway my best fans over to Michigan. Okay. Um, that is an hour. That's a, that's a two-hour or two-and-a-half-hour show that is – um, a little bit of hockey, um, a little bit of students, and a little bit of band. And sometimes it's equal parts. I mean, those that student section and that band goes constantly. It is so much fun to watch. It is so lively. There's no canned music. There's no organ. There's nothing. It's just college atmosphere. I think that's uh, – th- those might be the best fans. It used to be that maybe the Badgers fans were the most vocal. But since they fell off, I think they've got some regrouping to do. Well, you had actually uh, mentioned you had mentioned mm-hmm. Michigan and how the atmosphere is is so nice. You know, you know, we've wondered about the atmosphere at Mariucci, and they've really kind of moved away from the band and started plugging in more of that music. And you and Wally had mentioned to us that, uh, boy, Michigan, it's just all band all the time, all fans. They're just having a good time. And yeah, I mean, you, next time you watch a game or, or listen to a game from there, I mean, just pay attention to the background noise and how constant it is on every whistle that there's so, there's a there's a student chant, there's a band playing, they got a routine, they got a shtick, and it just keeps going. It's just, it's a lot of fun. I don't, I, uh, it's just a lot of fun. I can see where those kids go out and drink after those games. I mean, they've, they've <laughs> earned, they get thirsty. Worst Doing fans, Frank. Stuff. What's that? Worst fans. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be up 94, you think? It happens to be up 29, yeah. Oh, 94 and 29. <laughs> oh, those Who fans. They just loved you, didn't they? They do. They still do. <laughs> yeah, they, they still, yeah, just, so you had fun in Grand Forks this year? I didn't stay 200 miles out of town for no particular <laughs> reason. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, well, dear, yeah, I know. I know they listen, but... I love them like they love me. So, you know, we, we tolerate each other, I guess. It's, um, what can yeah. you do? It's just, yeah. Hey, I got it. But Rob Shield, I'm going to, I, he didn't ask for this, but maybe he sort of did. I'm just going to give another shout out to our stats crew. Oh, I mean, yeah. Those, those people are professionals. We, our, our stats crew in this building are spot on. I mean, there, there'll be an adjustment here and there, but, but not very often. And it's, geez, it's accurate and it's timely and, uh, Rob Shield is the official scorer, so he is, I don't know, the, the titular head of that group. But they do a great job. And, you know, part of the reason is that they're, they're, they're grownups. They're adults. They're getting a few shekels for it. Not much, but they're getting a few shekels every game. And um, it, they just do a good job. We go into these other arenas, and it's, it's students sometimes that are doing it. And they don't have a clue. I mean, it, goals come in. The, the assists are backwards, and uh, they get penalties backwards so anyway yeah there's no better crew anywhere that i've seen 
Well, there's a reason why, you know, the Minnesota crew did the final five all those years. Well, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, for one thing, they were there, but they were just, they were the best crew. So they did the final five. They'll be doing, they do the frozen four when the frozen four is here. They, they'll be the crew doing the, the frozen four and whether Minnesota's there or not. So they are the crew that, that handles uh, the local stuff when it's here. So. Right, and, and you're right. They're honest. I mean, they're they're honest. They're stingy. If you get a, if you get a point and you play at Mariucci Arena, you get a point. You've earned it. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have because you know we've seen they get their own DVR set up. They can go back and they can check. Oh, there was a deflection there. We should have an added assist or that you know it deflected off somebody's knee. It should be their goal instead of someone else's. They review everything and like you said, they'll correct it. Um, and, if you uh, get a shot, you've earned it. Yeah, that's true because they will go back and oh, look at question. Sure. They will look at questionable shots. This isn't Penn yeah. State where something close is just considered a shot. Um, they, you know, you know, our favorite uh, Mixler listener, Tom's, he's not around today, nicely. Um, he actually officially scored a, a game at Penn State last year um, from the television, and he saw the shots were at least oh, yeah. 10 over, 10 or 15 over from what he saw on TV. Um, and yeah, I, I saw a goaltender slap his mitt on a puck laying in front of him, uh, which was a rebound laying there, and they gave him a shot. They gave somebody oh, a shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's old-fashioned old, that's old fashioned stuff. That used to happen before there was television. You know, you'd go into buildings, and they'd, they'd pad numbers to make themselves look better. That, that shouldn't be happening now. I mean, come on. It's 21st century. No, yeah, it's, it's a good crew, and they, like, they, like you said, they take it very seriously. So, uh and if uh, you can follow them at Gopher Puck Stats on Twitter, you know they'll tweet out the the shot charts, and uh, so uh, follow them on Twitter. It's always a good follow. So we're th- we're hoping for a split split this Listen. weekend. You were going to say that something? would be reasonable. Hoping, I'm hoping for a split. That's pretty bad when I'm hoping for a split against St. Cloud. Oh well, no! Well, Why? In the, there, in, the pa- be good. in the past, I've been like, "Sweep, baby, sweep." <laughs> well, yeah, right. Right now, I'm hoping for a split. You've only won two of the last seven. I know that's that's the pathetic part. We should not be that low against in-state schools. And well, you you're just not look- going to be five and two against them. Well, so, well, hoping for a split, I think, would yeah. be pretty darn good. Well, just look at uh, Pat's provincial top teams in Minnesota. And right now, he's got Minnesota at number four out of five. Mr. Micheletti, so we need to get Uh-oh. that number up. So we need to get that number up. Any last thoughts on this weekend, Vegs? No, just uh, look for Tyler Nanny to play in a forward role this week. It'll be interesting um, and to see what they come up with uh, power play. Some guys have the flu. Uh, there's a couple guys nicked up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of lineup they have this weekend. Uh, Don texted with uh, Lindgren and Middlestat this week and both those guys are raring at the bit to play both games. Uh, oh, we'll see what happens there. Um, I would be surprised if they play both games, but, you know, they want to. Well, the players always want to play. That's yeah, just, that's especially Casey. I mean, he's, he's a guy who's played through injury in the past, and uh, the Gophers have actually held him back a little bit when he was nicked up at North Dakota. Uh, we'll see what happens this weekend. It's a big Hon- weekend for Gopher hockey. Honestly, I think uh, Casey wants to play at St. Cloud. It's, it's, oh, his, sure. it, it's his only chance probably ever to play a game, you know, against St. Cloud in St. Cloud. I mean, he's not going to be here another year. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's just played against the Russians. He will have just played against the Canadians. He's just going to be playing the, against the best in the world. And he, and you think he still wants to go up to the Granite City to play a game? He's a gopher. I, he's a gopher. I think he does. Okay. I think I, he does. I, I wouldn't. Uh, he, okay. don't, you, don't you think he probably loved going to Grand Forks earlier this year, even though they <laughs> – <laughs> Even though they head hunted him, he loved it. I know he's a competitive guy, and he's got skill to boot with it. I'm, I actually I wouldn't put anything past him, but um, an, an afternoon nap I think would be uh, wouldn't be un, <laughs> unreasonable I, I would, request on Saturday afternoon. I would put him in the lineup, even if you were just going to play him like eight or nine minutes. You know, put him in a, in a role where he gets, you know, a couple shifts a period and is out there for the power plays. I think that could be a difference maker in a game against St. Cloud. You know, that's a good point, Big, because this I, this team sometimes has looked better when they've, when they've gone with the 11 forward and just kind of rotating guys in. For some reason, it seems their concentration's a little bit more locked in. And that's why I think this, uh, you know, a nanny move to forward might just help 
uh, help this team overall. But you're right. Yeah. So if they spot him, uh, you know, dress 12 forwards and then make him like the uh, make him the 12th, so to speak. Get him in there every once in a while. You're right. And, could be, and could I think you could do the same thing with Lindgren. You know, just use him like the U.S. team is using him, where you have him out there for, you know, some D zone draws, have him out there for the penalty kill. You know, don't play him 25 minutes, but just play him, you know, 12, 12 minutes and put him in those key situations. And, you know, Don's been kind of creative with the lineup this year, so maybe we'll see that. Hopefully, you know, you, you know I think having Nanny – really helps in this situation because, you know, if, uh, you know, if he's playing, you know, they could put him back on defense if Lindgren gets tired or something like that. I mean, he's, it kind of offers a little more flexibility when they go to St. Cloud. So I kind of like that. Well, we, you know, we don't have a Zach Budish. We don't, you know, we don't have a big body Nick Dukestead. Uh, you know, we don't have those, those guys. We don't have a Hudson fashing up there that, that can bash, thrash, and score. And maybe, maybe Tyler can do that. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, Viggs, did you go to availability today? I did. You'll get uh, some Tyler Sheehy talking about the, the in-state rivalry and uh, what the team needs to do to have some success there. Uh, he, he dishes a little bit on the power play and how they've been struggling there. Uh, Don Lucia talks about how good St. Cloud is, um, the kind of keys for them playing in that game. Um, he talked a little bit about how it's important to have schools like St. Cloud on the schedule. And then you'll hear Tyler Nanny talk about, you know, moving to forward uh, for a couple games, maybe um, his history playing the position and uh, how he likes to bring a physical nature to the position. His first shift at forward against army. He, he really just lined up army's captain and, and uh, took him off his skates. It was a pretty <laughs> big hit. And, you know, as much as Frank's talking about Nanny as a big physical guy, you know, he's not, too big, <laughs> you know. When I'm staring at him in availability, he looks like a little guy to me, but he sure can bring the hits. Well, it, that's because you're a big guy, Viggs. You're on the meat line on the Rubes hockey team. You're, you know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's not a big guy. You know? No, he's not. He's, I don't know if he's five talking... eleven. I'm sorry, Tyler, but man. you guys are cutting in and out on me here. I'm only catching about every fourth word. You still talking, Tyler? Yeah, we were a little bit talking about his size and you know he's he, strong he, though. He's strong. He might not be big, but he plays big, and I think that's kind of the key there. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Hey, let's, I don't let's, want you to sign off yet. I got one more number twenty six for you. Oh boy, who is it? Jason Miller. Oh jeez, that's a keeper. Yeah. I'll have him on my team anytime. Okay. Over Pat McCluddy, he's got to be a little offended. I think. You know, it's about time somebody gets under Micheletti's bonnet. He's had it a little too easy here. He's oh, becoming you know, the darling of the media. Uh, you know, I, I, I might just take it on my job to keep him in track. I, I don't think he he wouldn't pick on him a guy that much older than him anyway. So I would just like I, to I get him be, on the. I should be safe. I would just like to get him on the podcast, and it's been really difficult to do. Most people. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you get him on the podcast, the rest of you guys can go out for a sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And, well, we've also Nick, tried. To, we've also tried to get Wally on the podcast, and, uh, and you think he might not be technically able to do it? <laughs> what are you putting that on me for? <laughs> Maybe run, dis- run a landline to his house. <laughs> it may have come from a, a discussion in Duluth while we were up there this past uh, October. <laughs> he may need his wife to help him connect. <laughs> We love you, Wally. We just like to get you on because I think Wally would be an excellent guest. So, I'll just have to wait. well, Frank, thanks for coming on again. This you is getting to be more and more fun. I like this. Well, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, <laughs> you and Nate are our go-to guys when it comes to guests. You're on at least once a season, and uh, we always appreciate it when you come on because uh, people love to hear from you. So, cool, appreciate it. Yeah, and I'm I'm following Nate now, so we. Sh- we should be good. We'll be buds oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Well, it's a big weekend that's coming up for the Gophers. You know, home and home with St. Cloud State. Remember, it's a Saturday-Sunday game a series. Um, You can always hear Frank on the call with uh, Wally Shaver on uh, – what is the network? It's just iHeartRadio, and you guys are on 1130, and you're on – you're on a bunch of different places, actually, now. The network is Gopher Sports Radio. True. If, it, true, Okay. Uh, locally, 11.30 a.m., WTLK. Uh, 
don't ask me the FM because there's a there's I know there's an HD, but I don't have HD radio anymore. And it's of course one hundred three point five. Okay, and then there's the iHeart Radio app, which gives you crystal clear reception. Yeah, it it is. I, I actually listen to you via that app, and uh, and like Vigo said, the HD is actually one hundred three point five. HD two, it's the number two channel. So if you go up to KFAN, if you're on HD and you hit the HD button, the second channel will be you guys in HD. And I, I, I think I told you, Frank, how much better the quality was um, on that yeah, HD yeah. station than than AM, especially at night. Once you get out in the boondocks where I live, uh, AM is so scratchy; it's just awful. But uh, your HD came in crystal clear all the way out to South Dakota where I live. So. Wow. You got to have an antenna on your roof for that? I don't know. How, how do you get HD? What is well, that? I, I, get, I get it in my car, and that's the only place. So that's good. Oh, dear. You sit in your car at night? That scares no, me. No, I don't. But <laughs> <laughs> but well, well, like I said, I, you know, I have at times had to listen to my car, and with the HD, it's, it's, like, it's basically FM, Frank. You, you sound that good. So it's all good. Thank you. Well, you could follow Frank on... Twitter at Maz Puck. You know, you can follow Vigo at EVigo, Hammy at Hammy Hockey. We lost Hammy. Who knows where he went? Technical difficulties. We don't care anymore. Um, you know, we'll be back next week to s- recap this series with the Huskies and then kicking off a little more Big Ten hockey. I suck at getting used to that. So. Thanks for listening. How's the power play coming along? <laughs> the two different looks that you talked about after last weekend. Well, we're going to you know, try some different guys and move some people around and maybe put some guys to back where some spots they were a year ago um, and uh, see if we can you know, generate something because uh, obviously it's, a, it's hurt us uh, not consistently being able to score on the power play. And you know, I think this is probably an all-time low at about 14%, 15%, whatever we are. And, you know, we're getting chance. We had ten shots on goal, and but we're just we're not finishing. And um, you know, hopefully that uh, some of these pucks will start to go in. We have to, you know, do a better job of one tiny one timing some pucks. Um, you know, we've I think part of it is we've obviously played good teams and you know good penalty kill teams and um, you know good good strong schedule that 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 plays into it a little bit. But um, you know we had made some strides up until the, the first week of December against Ohio State, and then we. You know, we had been about 20 plus percent the previous month, but then, you know, now we're over the last four games, and, you know, it hurts you. I mean, it, um, in these low scoring games, one, a goal on the power play can be the difference between winning and losing games. And, you know, we, we have to start to feel where we not only can score, but and or generate momentum on the power play. What are the challenges with St. Cloud's penalty kill? Um, well, I mean, they, when you look at their team, I mean, it's just not their kill. It's a, you know, their goaltending save percentage are 93 plus. And uh, the old saying is the best penalty killer is your goaltender. And uh, um, so, you know, they're there to clean it up. They've got, you know, they're veteran. they got a veteran decor. they got a veteran, you know, guys up front. Uh, you know, but probably the biggest worry is their, their power play as much as anything because uh, that's what's really been lethal against us the last couple of years is their, uh, they've scored multiple uh, power plays at key times to beat us. They have about eight guys between five and seven goals. What kind of a challenge is that? Well, they're deep. I mean, if you look from an offensive standpoint, they're probably the deepest team in college hockey from an offensive standpoint. And, um, you know, that's why, I mean, what they've lost two games all year, and that was out at Denver back in November. And um, they're just, they don't rely on one or two lines to score, but they have great secondary scoring. Um, I know Bob felt they were kind of a year away at last year. Uh, you know, they've got uh, a good decor. We talked about their goaltending. So, I mean, they're probably, you could argue, the most complete team in college hockey this year uh, from offense to defense to goaltending to specialty team play. It's kind of a strange feeling, Don, because it's, it's a non-conference game, but it feels like it's a rivalry league game or whatever. Do you like that? Yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, it, 
I think it's it's nice to play good teams. I mean, all of a sudden I look at the uh, top of the uh, the rankings, and we've played Notre Dame, we've played Clarkson, and now we're playing St. Cloud. Well, those are the top three teams in the poll. And we talked about, I think we have the number one strength of schedule right now in the country. We've played nothing but good teams all year long, and this will this will be another test. And uh, it, from the standpoint especially of, you know, I don't think we'll see a better team this year. And we've played the top three. How, how are we going to match up this weekend? Where are we at? Now, it's going to be a little unique because guys are getting parachuted back you know, on Saturday. Uh, is Casey going to play? Is he going to be back in time? Or Ryan Lindgren going to be back in time? Um, you know, heck, maybe Bob's going to miss his flight. He won't even be there. Um, so it's a little bit unique that you, you play the games this weekend, and if those two guys do play, they haven't practiced with our group all year, all, all this week or since, you know, Ohio State. So whether it's throwing them back on the power play uh, with Casey in that instance, it's, you know, can we get that chemistry back? And then, you know, even for them, the fatigue factor of possibly playing, you know, four games in four days or five games in six days. But I know I texted them both, I, you know, today and just said kind of what they're thinking. And they both said they want to play. You know, now we'll see what their flight, flight times are and when they get home on Saturday. How close are they kind of cutting it uh, in terms of being back? Are you preparing for them that they will play? Or? Yeah, I, well, I think that uh, I, I asked them to send me their today their flight schedules. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you know, it might be on my phone as, as I'm sitting here. Um, I think they thought originally that they'd get home around noon, which would be in plenty of time. But I mean, you, you, I mean, it's obviously the fatigue factor. They'll be running on adrenaline, obviously, this weekend with uh, you know what's going on the next couple of days. But you know, it's not about the guys, those two guys. It's about you know the guys that are here, and that we continue to play well. Uh, I like the fact that we're getting both our goalies played well this past weekend. Um, you know, the giving up goals hasn't been our, our, our problem. Our penalty kills much improved from the first month of the season. Uh, but, you know, the, the issue we've had this year more than any other um, is the offensive part of the game and generating. Now, I think Clayton can help us with that. I think Clayton can help on the power play. That's why we brought him in at Christmas because we felt that was a real need uh, on the back end. Uh, and at least even in practice, I mean, it, this week, He's had a little bit more time, and you know you can see that he's getting more comfortable. And you know when we had him on one of the units, that you know that he was moving it pretty well. I mean, you just he's got some things you can't teach with snapping the puck in his feet and even getting some pucks through. That's been such an issue. But um, so we, we we have to get better on that side of the the, the puck because uh, that's what's cost us. I mean, we've we've lost games, given up one or two goals, and that's kind of unheard of with with us. Uh, but this year, it's it's been a struggle to score. How's your team's health going in the series? Uh, a lot of question marks right now, to be honest. Uh, we had some guys missing today at practice and, you know, some uh, other issues. So uh, we probably won't know till, you know, Friday in the availability of a couple guys. Illness or injury scare you more this time? Uh, well, you can get both. We've had uh, three guys out with the flu early this week, and, you know, now we got a couple guys with some dings, and, you know, so there's that combination. But you, you kind of sense that, and we were lucky because I think a couple guys came down with the flu right after they – you know, the game uh, on Saturday night. So you hope that it doesn't just, you know, nail your team at an inopportune time. You tell him Lindgren to wash his hands and make sure he comes back in better shape than he did last year? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, he was really sick. I mean, uh, like he went to the hospital when he got back for a couple of days last year. And uh, I think it took him, I bet you it took him two to three weeks to recover from that before he was back to his old self. But, uh, you know, He's not sick now, and you know I know how disappointed he was last year not to play in that gold medal game. So, you know, hopefully those guys will get another opportunity to, to win a gold. Make sure Bob doesn't have control of the food and flight schedule. There. Yeah, you know what? I'm a little worried about that. That you know he and his uh, um, paling will get back, and you know somehow our guys will get routed through Florida to get back. What a what a series that Casey has had. Yes, he's done really well. And you know what? It, I've always said one of the nice things about the World Juniors they get back in their own age group. You know, yeah. so Casey jumps to college hockey, and you're playing against 22, 23, 24-year-olds, and now you're back playing against, you know, 18 and 19-year-olds, so your old age group. So it just it shows the type of player that he is and, you know, the competitiveness. I think that's – I've got a few texts from the coaches, and I think that's a thing that uh, that has – been reinforced when they've been around him in this tournament is just how competitive he is. And I didn't even, I didn't realize how competitive he was till I'd been around him this fall. I knew he was the, I knew he was a lead player, but I didn't realize that how competitive he is to win, get a puck back, you know, battle. Uh, you know, he, he wants to, 
he wants to be an elite player. He trains to be an elite player, and you know his, his competitiveness is is really off the charts. With the North Star going, having gone away, and uh, there being former games in the Big Ten, how important is it to still get those Minnesota teams? Well, that's part of it. I mean, it's not going to be every year. I mean, now we have 24 games, and you know we have to monitor our schedule a little bit too. Is that you know if North Dakota's on it and Duluth's on it, I mean, it you know St. Cloud's one of the top teams. I mean, at some point you can over schedule a little bit too. And and uh, but uh, obviously with whether it's Bemidji or St. Cloud, um, Duluth, Mankato, they have to be on a rotation that we we play them. So I, I think that you know we've run a pretty good ro- rotation now with North Dakota just about every year, and then we want to rotate some other teams in and out, and we also want to have the flexibility to you know to go out to the East Coast or play some of these teams that maybe we don't normally get to play that often. Has it been difficult to kind of find that balance and so, so many teams want to play? And just um, yes and no. I mean, ultimately, it's our decision. I mean, we, we have to worry what's best for the University of Minnesota at, at some point. And, you know, we owe, like Harvard coming in this year, we owe them a return trip. So, but, you know, just like we did um, uh, with our trips with uh, Clarkson and St. Lawrence and going out there or the BC Northeastern, it, it's kind of, it's good for our guys to, to get out in some different environments than, you know, just playing out here. Have you figured out local your teams. 10 games for next year? Uh, some of them, yeah, not all of them. I'd have to, you know, I kind of turn the scheduling over to Mike right now, so he's, he's in charge of that. But we're, we're looking to try to bring back the, uh, the tournament at Christmas time. That's one of the things we want to, we'll want to do. Well, it's just you like to play St. Cloud State. It's a strange thing. It's a non-conference, and yet you feel like it's the biggest series of the year in summertime. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> obviously, St. Cloud's having a great year. Uh, being number one in the country and, um, you know, stringing together a lot of wins here. So uh, it's going to be a real big, important weekend for us, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun anytime you get to play in-state rival. Um, the energy is always great, and the buildings are always packed, so it's going to be a great weekend. What would be the biggest challenge facing them? Uh, I think just like any other year, um, they, they play really hard. Uh, they're kind of, they're kind of like a North Dakota, a, a Duluth. They're, they're going to skate hard. They're going to be they're going to have some skill and uh, they're going to defend well. So um, I think that uh, just you know breaking that seal with with us uh, um, this past weekend, we got a few more goals than we have been getting um, the past uh, few weeks. Um, you know that's going to be I think the challenge is is making sure we, we continue to score some goals and then defend as well. We won a few in a row against you. Is that uh, extra motivation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, last year we we kind of. Um, we, we lost that one game here at home, and we we uh, had the lead going in the third, so that was kind of a heartbreaker. And uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, beaten St. Cloud yet here in my career, so it's definitely extra motivation for uh, for the guys who who uh, you know kind of seen St. Cloud and haven't been able to uh, to beat them. So uh, I think it's going to be a really fun weekend in that aspect. How does their atmosphere up there rank among the teams you play? Yeah, it's great. It's just like in North Dakota. You know, the, the buildings are is really packed and they're loud, and their students are right on the glass. So it's a great environment, and uh, like I said, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Do you have any favorite moments from the student section up there? Uh, not that I can remember. I remember uh, last year. Um, I just remember it, it being packed, and uh, I, I love that they're right on the glass, and you know they can, you know, they bring signs and things like that. So it's it's pretty cool. Takeaways from last weekend, do you think the team took any steps forward last weekend? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, first off, our, our penalty kill was 100% on the weekend, and, um, you know, that was something that, you know, we always we always want to improve on, you know, getting close to 90%, and uh, we're getting there. So um, our penalty kill was really good. Um, obviously, like I, like I mentioned before, our, we scored a few more goals than we have been in the past, so uh, that's good to see some guys get on the scoreboard, and uh, just improving those aspects was important for us. Uh, you got a fix for the power play? Uh, we moved uh, we moved a few guys around. Um, I think it's just you know ho- hopefully we can get one and break the seal. Um, you know it's been it's been tough. Um, it's been tough not getting the goals, but it's it's important that we go out there and get some momentum and uh, you know carry it on throughout throughout the rest of the game. So uh, you know that's something that we're going to work on this weekend and and throughout the practice this week and hopefully it works this weekend. Pretty involved what Casey Middlestat's been doing. Oh, the- oh yeah, yeah. I've been watching uh, just about every game. Uh, he's been great. I know I didn't ex- didn't expect anything uh, anything less from him. Um, you know, at a, at a big stage like that, he's gonna he's gonna perform. He's a great player, so that's, that's really cool to see. Playing well on the road has kind of been a strain for you guys the first couple of years here, and it's been a bit of a struggle this season. Is there anything that you guys are kind of trying to uh, push forward this week, and especially going up to St. Cloud on the Saturday game? 
Um, I'm not sure if anything's going to change too much. Obviously, that's something that we've addressed. Um, you know, our road record this year isn't, isn't the best, and, uh, you know, it's something we need to get better at going into the end of the year. We're going to have to play on the road and, and uh, you know, beat teams on the road if we want to, you know, play in the final game of the year. So, um, yeah, that's, that's something that has to improve. And, um, you know, I think it's just stick to our game plan, you know, you know play hard and, and uh, do, the, do things the right way. will be, we'll be good for us this weekend. Coming off a of break, you said you wanted the guys to relax. Is that hard to do when you go to St. Cloud? Um, I think maybe a little bit, yeah. That the tensions may, might be a little bit high with a with a rival like that. But um, I think if we just go out there um, and you know we're comfortable with our game and and we know you know we got each other's backs, things like that. Um, I think we'll be all right with with uh, you know not letting the the crowd get to us. It's been a bit of an eventful week uh, for you and your family. You could see uh, Vinny uh, beat the NHL and get his first goal. Yeah, it was exciting to see him get called up. Uh, he's been dreaming that for a long time, and so have we. Um, you know, to see him play in the NHL, it's a, it's a dream come true for us. And, um, you know, scoring his first game was really uh, an exciting time. How, how important is this uh, St. Cloud series to you guys playing an in-state team that's ranked number one in the country? Uh, we can just tell from the start, beginning of practice, uh, we've been going, you know, really hard and making sure pucks are uh, – Pass crisp and um, you're really listening to coach and the drills and um, you know the result hasn't been there the last couple of years so I think the the tempos are really set high um, and you know we really owe the program a couple of wins this weekend. How does uh, getting acclimated to the college scene for you? How's it gone for the first half here now? Uh, it's been good. It's been a huge adjustment, uh, but a blessing to be back on the ice. I think uh, taking that much time off, you uh, really get to know yourself, but. Um, Obviously, it wasn't the start we wanted, you know, having nine losses on the season so far, but uh, a lot of room for improvement. I think the, the break really helped us get refreshed and come back with a different mindset and uh, a winning mindset, that is, to really uh, give it our all and listen to coach, and hopefully the result will be there. How about you personally? How's your game evolved? Uh, I think I'm learning each and every day. I think uh, i got a long ways to go, but uh, I'm proud of where I am right now. Um, you know, playing forward in D, I think it's been an adjustment, but I've, I've had experience on both ends of the ice uh, growing up. So um, whatever position I can help the team the most, I'm going to play. So. Are you getting looks at both? What do you prefer? Uh, I prefer defense, but um, obviously being an offensive defenseman, I can play forward um, and get up in the ice. And uh, I think uh, if I can use my physical presence and my shot, um, hopefully some pucks will go in the back of the net. Don said after the game on Saturday that if you're going to play more forward, you're going to have to practice there. Has, has that been brought up this week? Yeah, uh, this week I'm actually practicing at forward, uh, bouncing around different lines, but I'm um, just getting acclimated with different guys on the on the ice and uh, mostly playing right wing, but yeah, we'll never know until the weekend. But uh, yeah, I think uh, wherever I end up come the weekend, I'll play it and play hard. Against Army on your first shift, you had that kind of decision to go for the puck or go for the body, and, and you took the body. Is that a big adjustment for you at forward to do that? Uh, no. I think at the back, when I play defense, uh, I really try to use my physical play. Um, and, you know, I think our coach has been stressing a lot on forechecking and winning puck battles. And I was fortunate to body the guy and um, get the puck. So I think if we can play more with a physical demeanor and a um, little grit, then I think we'll be successful. Is it harder to throw hip checks at forward? Yeah, I know it's, uh, you know, facing the other way, it's a different mindset, but I might sneak one there next week. Where did you play forward in the past? Uh, so growing up, I played for the 96 machine and AAA in the summer, and I'd play D. And then uh, in the wintertime for Pee Wee Squirts and Bantams, I'd play forward. Um, mainly just because I wanted to score goals, but uh, deep down I knew I was a better defenseman. And then come high school, I played uh, half and half sophomore year, D in defense, and then or D in forward. And then uh, junior year is when I made my tr transition to fully defenseman. I think I uh, played about five games and uh, start the season, and then they put me back there. So uh, looking back on it, it's really helped me evolve uh, with make, you know being a two way player. But um, deep down, I know going forward, if Defense is the route I want to take. That's the route I want to take. But as of right now, I'm playing forward. What does it, uh, growing up being Minnesota, what does it mean to kind of just play some of these in-state schools? Uh, you know, really uh, don't have much experience with it. But, you know, I, I grew up going to the Duluth and St. Cloud and uh, the green team in Wisconsin. I think uh, all those teams, it's just a, 
the rivalry and the you know the feeling inside the building is um, really special. And I think uh, you know obviously looking back at our, our record against the in-state, it's it's not pleasing, and I think that's when uh, we kind of realized we got to step it up. So I think if we uh, if we can uh, just play our game and listen to coach, I think uh, we'll start turning around and getting revenge on the in-state guys. Has that kind of come up this week, just the record recently? Oh, a little bit. Uh, we, we don't like looking in the past. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a new season. Um, but anytime you can uh, play the number one team in the country, it's uh, the bar set even higher. And, um, you know, you, you give it even more. So I think uh, we're going to be ready. We're going to be prepared. We've had a good start to the week and uh, finish off strong and head to St. Cloud on Saturday.